Well, in the next three hours, the term of David Kenani Maraga as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya will officially come to an end. What does it mean for the judiciary? A very good, after a very good evening to you. Welcome to Channel One News Hour. Let's focus on some of the stories that we have been following for you, including what is expected to transpire at the judiciary following the end of the term of the Chief Justice. But first things first, let's look at the highlights. The milestones we have achieved in moving the judiciary transformation to where it is today is our collective ach achievement for which I draw enormous pride. Maraga exits the judiciary. Justice Philomena Mwili takes over as acting chief justice following the retirement of David Maraga. Tracking learners. Statistics on teen pregnancy remains a concern as learners begin the second week of learning following resumption of physical classes. And political power please. Moranga Senator Irungo Kangata says his letter to the president has been weaponized by his political force as week of politics begins. Well, welcome back. Lensa Odingo is our sign language interpreter, and my name is Catherine Achenga. Let's now focus on the stories that have been making news throughout the day, and we begin with the events that transpired earlier this morning at the Supreme Court, where uh, Justice Philomena Mbetu Mwilu takes over as the Chief Justice in an acting capacity following the retirement of David Kenani Maraga, who surrendered his instruments of power following the completion of his four year non renewable term. His departure from the judiciary was characterized by glowing tribute from his peers and those that he mentored. Sarafina Robi with details of the special ceremony that was held to honor him as he retires from the judiciary. I, David Kenani Maraga, Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and the President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, do swear in the name of the Almighty God on the 19th of October 2016, Chief Justice David Kenani Maraga took oath of office as the 14th Chief Justice of Kenya and the second since the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution. Monday, the 11th of January 2021, will mark the end of his career not just as the Chief Justice, but as judge after attaining the mandatory retirement age of 70 years. In a special ceremony to mark his exit, an application will be made on behalf of the Law Society of Kenya by the president of the LSK, Nelson Harvey. Uh, my lords, judges of the Supreme Court, on behalf of the Law Society, I'm very grateful to the court for having considered the application and made. The bench constituting of five judges, including Justice Maraga, will grant it. The uh, uh, application by Nelson Harvey, the president of the Law Society of Kenya, succeeds in its entirety, and the same is granted as prayed. For the avoidance of doubt, the Chief Justice David Kenani Maraga shall be deemed to retire at midnight tonight, the 11th day of January 2021. This will mark the end of the official ceremony inside the courtroom. They will then convene outside the Supreme Court. Maraga will reminisce of his four-year journey as the country's second chief justice under the current constitution. The milestones we have achieved in moving the judiciary transformation to where it is today is our collective ach achievement for which I draw enormous pride. He challenged the judiciary to continue upholding the rule of law. I want to urge that you don't let the people of Kenya down. I'm sure you live in this country and you have seen the drums of political war being beaten already. My colleagues, if you waver, 
if you waver and do the wrong thing and this country descends into chaos, God will never forgive you. Justice Philomena Mwilu, who took over as Chief Justice in acting capacity, hailed him for the integrity and mentorship and reforms in the court processes. As Chief Justice, your commitment, your vision and leadership uh, accelerated transformation in the judiciary. It depend independence of the institution accountability of judges and transparency across the institution. It increased public confidence in the courts and tribunals and enhanced access to justice for many Kenyans. My Lord, you leave a proud, irreversible legacy, particularly in regard to harnessing technology towards the effective and efficient dispensation of justice, judicial independence, protecting and entrenching the rule of law, and fidelity to the same across public governance to the Constitution. She will then receive the instruments of power in the judiciary, including the Constitution, the judiciary flag, and status report of the judiciary. And in the same breath, Maraga was derobed. Evans Gisheru retired, succeeded by Dr. Willie Mutu. He then bid farewell to his colleagues. And after the number plate of his vehicle is changed, he boards his personal vehicle, gets the last salute as Chief Justice, and drives out of the judiciary, having served his time in public office with his family in tow. The Chief Justice David Kenani Maraga, as hailed by the legal fraternity, leaves behind a strong legacy and an independent judiciary as he has those he leaves behind to continue upholding the rule of law as they await for the appointment of the 15th Chief Justice of Kenya. Reporting for Channel One News from the Supreme Court of Kenya, I'm Serafina Robbie. Now, the four-year term of Justice David Maraga as Chief Justice expires at the stroke of midnight, bringing to an end his tenure as the President of the Judiciary. His four-year term has been characterized by historic rulings, making him the first Chief Justice in Africa to preside over the nullification of a presidential election. Maraga has also locked horns with the legislature and judiciary alike while undertaking his mandate. Caroline Kamau looks back at his highs and lows as the Chief Justice as the curtain falls on his tenure. David Kenani Maraga ascended to the helm of the judiciary on the 19th of October 2016 after his predecessor Dr. William Mutunga went on voluntary early retirement. I, David Kenani Maraga, Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and the President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, do swear in the name of the Almighty God. His tenure in office as the 14th Chief Justice of Independent Kenya goes down in the annals of history as one that was characterized by many firsts. The first being him presiding over the nullification of the 2017 presidential election and ordering a fresh election. That the presidential election held on 8th August 2017 was not conducted in accordance with the Constitution and the applicable law rendering the declared results invalid, null, and void. He was among one of the four Supreme Court judges to support a re-election. The ruling made history as the first presidential petition in Africa to be overturned. And that would mark the beginning of Maraga's perceived first relations with the executive. One of his many decisions that also act the legislature was an advisory opinion to the president to dissolve parliament for failing to enact the two-thirds gender law. The matter is now subject of a court battle. Towards the end of his term, Maraga found himself at loggerheads with the executive yet again of a proposal by the Building Bridges Initiative to have a judiciary ombudsman appointed by the president with the approval of the Senate. Maraga was of the opinion that the 
the Judiciary or Bootsman be appointed by the Judicial Service Commission to avoid conflicting decisions. Not one to shy away from speaking his mind, he once faulted the executive for reportedly disrespecting court orders in the case of appointment of 41 judges to the judiciary. The president has no residual legal power to question or reject the names recommended to him by HSC, but to appoint them. Some of his key achievements was the launch of the e-filing system and digitization of court processes. The move did not only improve efficiency and accountability, but reduced the time taken to file and serve a case. Maraga leaves office upon the attainment of 70 years, but his decisions will be documented for generations to come. Caroline Kamar reporting for Channel 1 News. Well, that's it for David Kenani Maraga as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya with about uh, three hours left to the official end of his term. Now, in other news, the second week of learning following the reopening of schools kicked off with the government maintaining its push for all learners to report back to school, including those who are expectant. This is after it emerged that over 90 girls in Kericho County became pregnant while schools were closed. Kericho County is ranked among the counties with the highest turnout of learners reporting back to school. This event as schools in Meru County recorded a low turnout since schools reopened on the 4th of January 2021. In Kericho County, over 91 schoolgirls are reported to have fallen pregnant, speaking in Kimugu Primary School during his tour to assess the implementation of the COVID-19 safety protocols. Interior CS Dr. Fred Matiangi affirmed the government's commitment to ensure all learners report back to school. There are about 91 girls uh, who uh, are are expecting and we have agreed the government policies that we get our children back to school all of them including those who who are expecting pregnancy is not a disease as our minister for education professor magua says so so the the county has done very well it was a similar situation in samburu county speaking at lodokejek primary in samburu central sub county water and sanitation principal secretary joseph irungu noted that most learners in early childhood development centers primary and secondary schools have already reported back to school Meanwhile, a poor turnout has been recorded in Meru County, with private schools being worst hit. Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Public Service, Mary Kemonye, who was in KK in Kengenchia Primary School in Tigania, West Sub County, attributed this to the fact that many parents in private schools may have opted to transfer their children. The private schools, we are at 81%. This is a case of concern for the private schools. But you know, private schools are under different management. When we've talked to the chairman of the private schools uh, in Meru, he seems to think that these schools may have transferred most of their children. And Foreign Affairs Principal Secretary Ambassador Masharia Kamau, who was in Nakuru to tour schools across the county, has reiterated the need for the community, elected leaders and schools to collaborate in ensuring the implementation of the COVID-19 safety protocols. Uh, this idea that government will solve all problems is a very old idea and it works nowhere in the world and it will not work here either in Kenya. People have to understand that education and health uh, are basically the responsibilities of communities and people coming together. Finally, Ugunja Member of Parliament, Opio Wandai, has challenged the government to come up with an official policy guideline on the payment of school fees in learning institutions in the wake of the resumption of physical learning in schools across the country. The MP argues that the current arrangement, where everything has been left at the whims of the school heads, will present a challenge when schools run out of funds for their operations. The government cannot just sit back that uh, now we have given directive that students be allowed to learn, not to school fees, and then that's nothing. That is a recipe for fantastic, in my view. And very soon, we're just seeing unrest and, and beginning to develop in schools. As a result of those schools not being able to provide the students and the people with the necessary facilities. For Channel One News, I'm Safin Aching Oma. 
Now, Moranga Senator Irungo Kangata now says his letter regarding the approval of the Building Bridges Initiative in Mount Kenya has been weaponized. Kangata defended himself against claims that he was being used by some politicians to cause divisions, claiming those opposing the bill have good proposals that should be adopted to ensure the report is unanimously endorsed. Senate Majority Whip Irungo Kangata has denied harboring ill will in the ongoing clamor for constitutional review. The lawmaker recently made headlines when he allegedly wrote a letter to the president giving his assessment of the performance of the Building Bridges Initiative in the Mount Kenya region. And notwithstanding that fact, the discussion arising out of that letter appears to vindicate my strong view that uh, there are people who are uh, not being candid and frank on matters BBI, particularly the level of approval rating of BBI in our region of uh, Mount Kenya. Kangata's letter has been met with varied opinion among the political class, with others accusing the lawmaker of going to bear with the detractors of the constitutional initiative. When good proposals come from whichever side, you now weaponize them. Instead of looking at the merit of a proposal, you start to bastardize that proposal just because it is coming from a certain quarter. The Building Bridges Initiative seeks to, among others, ensure inclusivity and entrench the unity of purpose in the country. We must embrace inclusivity. We must understand that each and every Kenyan pays taxes. Taxes are collected in all regions of this country without discrimination. Therefore, don't discriminate when it comes to making appointments. Odinga spoke on Monday in Karen as he sought the endorsement of the BBI by a lobby group led by Maina Jenga. Tutazaidia baba kupanda milima. Na usidanganyo na mutu baba, haba hakuna upinzani, watu wote wanajua baba ni nani. I'm encouraging the youth to get into BBI report, read it, and give the people who are the everybody who is uh, who is depending on them informative information. Meanwhile, a section of leaders from Embu County have been accused of impeding the popularization of the BBI report in the region. Majority of our political leaders coalescing around our deputy president are overtrain anti BBI. We should therefore remind them that the document they purport has not reached the people was widely shared in social media after the launch at Bomas in uh, October 20, a document they, are, they have and which they decided and refused to share with those who elected them, denying them knowledge uh, so that they can pendle lies. This even as the Kenya Muslim National Council Advisory Chair urged Kenyans to support the BBI with a view of bridging widening tribal and political gaps in the country. Kwa dhati kabisa wapigie debe BBI na kiunga mkono ipite kwa referenda. And as the race to replace Mike Sonko at City Hall continues gathering momentum, the county assembly has accused a section of politicians of alleged intimidation. The deputy president and his team ought to have known better than any one of us that the county assemblies are independent and do not take instructions from political rallies. The Nairobi County Assembly Deputy Speaker said the Assembly is under immense political pressure to act in a particular way in efforts to fill the position of the Nairobi Deputy Governor. Meanwhile, the Nyandarua County Assembly has withdrawn its membership from the County's Assembly's Forum. 26 ward representatives on Monday voted to remove the County Assembly from CAF, accusing the Forum of failing to address the needs of the County Assembly. Bugera Nyandarua, Litakua uh, suspended kwa wiki bili na tutarudi kwanzia leo na tutarudi tarehe 26 uh, uh, mwezi huu wa Januari uh, mwaka huu saa tatu na nusu asubuhi The Nyandarwa ward representative her father written to CAF advising the forum to elect another chairperson following the impeachment of speaker Ndegwa Wahome Wahome was impeached last Friday for alleged gross misconduct and abuse of office For Channel 1 News I'm Gladys Mongai well, that story by Gladys Mungai brings us to a fast break on Channel One News Hour. Remember, we are also live on Facebook, on Twitter, as well as on YouTube. I can see uh, some of you indicating that you are watching us from different parts of the country. I have Mark Macau, David Wangila, uh, Lebara Ital Box, you call yourself, Brian Mukabwa, Andeka Andegwa Melvin, Sally Salome Wangare, 
uh, all telling us where you're watching us from different parts of the country. So just let me know where you're watching us from, as well as leave a brief comment. I will be glad to just let the viewers know that you are tuned in to Channel One News Hour. Let's take that breather, but we will be back in just a bit. Mwone Faisal ndio yu aliwekelea bidi ya TV na ndio yu anenda nao Faisal. Ebu tuwame ni vipu uwekelea bidi. Milienda kwenye website ya Pick Bid. Mm -hmm. Nikatizama nika chagua kuwekelea kwenye TV. Mm -hmm. Sami liwekelea mara tatu. Nikaja kwa mshindi, nika kutana bidi enye me nifanya kwa niko mshindi ilikuwa ni miyamoja stini na nani. Mm -hmm. Sa leo mikaitua nikaja, nika chukua, nchukue TV yangu. Aya Faisal, aya. Kwa mali yako, kusaidie. Jiunga na QuickBid ni raisi. Enda kwenye M-Pesa, bonyeza paybill, kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi ya bidha unayotaka. Na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 22 kama idadi yako. Uweka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipeke, niyo ununua. QuickBid, bidha abora kwa bidi ya chini. Get ready for a three weeks Africa football feast as the new year kicks off with the sixth edition of the African Nations Championship in Cameroon. From the 16th of January to the 7th of February 2021, 16 teams from the continent will be spread across three cities as the best players from domestic leagues showcase their talents live on KBC Channel 1. Let's support our own. Tonight on KBC Channel 1. Tonight on Grapevine, we crisscross different continents. We host Sana all the way from China. This for the gang and big picture gonga to Natuna. Uh, Kwasi nili release time ya lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was really uh -huh. ill at them. Papa Buku, we were affected with the first one. When everyone else was at one in the lair with their own things. You better go with the flow. Give money. Alifanya vituko. You know, when she went on stage, she had this Dera. Kumbe, little did people know she had another outfit, Yakuwa Desa. The tallest model in Sub Sahara, Africa, is also in the show. You know, I was about the same height with the tallest model in the world, the tallest professional model at the time, you know, the Guinness World Record. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same model had two records, mm -hmm. which is the longest lean in the world. See your turn. What you gotta do? Welcome back. You're watching Channel One News Hour. Now, in other news, Lawrence Warunge, the man accused of killing his family members, will spend the next 14 days in custody as detectives piece together evidence in the alleged gruesome homicide. Joroge and his girlfriend have been remanded at the Mudaiga police station after Joroge allegedly confessed to the police that he was behind the killings. On Monday, Chief Government Pathologist Johansen Odor conducted a postmortem on the five victims, saying they bled to death after sustaining numerous stab wounds and blunt force trauma. Lawrence Warunge and Sarah Muthoni in Jogona appeared before Kiambu Chief Magistrate Patricia Gishohi days after they were arrested over the killing of five people in Kagongo village, Kiamba sub-county. Chief Magistrate Patricia Gishohi directed the two suspects be remanded for a fortnight as detectives unravel the circumstances that led to the gruesome murder. I've also considered that if the suspects are released, their lives uh, may be in danger due to the gravity of the offense. Besides, the two minors who are siblings to the first respondent uh, may also be in danger if the suspects are released. The investigations remaining also require substantial time to be completed. But to cap it all, the suspects say they have understood the application and they have no objection to that. So in the circumstances, I allow the application for remand as prayed regarding the police stations indicated. And I remand them for a period of 14 days. A few kilometers away, a post-mortem was being conducted to ascertain what killed the victims. All of them died because of multiple injuries, which are caused by blunt and the penetration trauma, and also significant loss of blood. 
it's most likely that the, the weapon which was used was used on all the victims. From the stab wounds, it looked like it was the same, same weapon. And uh, of course, uh, there were multiple weapons because there were injuries caused by blunt weapon, yeah, which was so mostly on the head. Chances are very high it was one attacker, but if you are more than one, probably the weapon used was similar. Warunge allegedly confessed to the police that he was behind the killing of four members of his family and a mason. In Kadero County, the suspect in the murder of a 33-year-old has been remanded for 14 days to allow police wrap-up investigations. The deceased is said to have been with the suspect on Thursday night before her body was discovered by her house help in the bedroom. Of how they're implementing. Meanwhile, Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi has directed the Immigration Department to commence an audit of all foreign investors in Kenya. Foreigners in the county, and I have asked uh, the county security team, any of the foreigners who may be in the county and are engaged in this illegal business, we will do what the law requires us to do, namely apprehend them, make them ensure that they face the law, and then most likely deport them. Because when you are not a Kenyan and you are here, you know, uh, engaged in illegal activities, you are not supposed to be here. At the same time, Matiangi ordered the reorganization of security teams in Kericho in the fight against illicit brew and all illegal trade. And within the next 48 to 72 hours, we are going to reorganize our deployment in this county uh, because the areas where genuinely, even as the members of the public are complaining, we have weaknesses which we need to address. So tomorrow, we begin an operation to clean up uh, areas of this county, like uh, parts of Buret, where the consumption of illicit brews is very high. And within the next 24 hours or so, we will address some of the challenges that have been raised related to gambling and the illicit business related to this. Reporting for Channel One News, I'm Jackie Wambiru. Now, Kenya has maintained a low positivity rate of below 5% for the second week in a row, raising hopes that the spread of the virus could have reached a plateau. On Monday, out of the 2001, 2000, rather, 134 samples that were tested, only 63 cases were confirmed, increasing the country's caseload to 98,334. Another three patients have succumbed to the contagion in the last 24 hours. Nancy Okware with an update from the Ministry of Health in the second week of schools reopening. For the past two weeks, the country has witnessed a steady drop in COVID-19 infections with a positivity rate below 5%. The latest figures by the ministry pointed at 2.9% positivity rate. The total case burden now nearing the 100,000 mark at 98,334. The county of Nairobi has recorded 43 new infections, followed by Kakamega, Makuen and Kilifi having three cases each, Busia, Kiambu, Moranga and Laikipia two cases each, while Nyeri, Nakuru and Machakos each had one case. The number of recoveries rose to 81,101 after 226 more patients were discharged. The death toll also increased after three more people succumbed, pushing the total number of fatalities to 1,713. Currently, 687 patients are admitted in hospital, out of whom 31 are in the intensive care unit and another 2,190 under home-based care. Nancy Okware, Channel One News. Now, the state could be required to enact legislation to ensure the Constitution embraces the goals of African unity and political confederation of the Eastern African region. This is part of the proposal that is contained in the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020. Tonight, our reporter Kevin Washira looks at Article 10A of the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill that is sponsored by the BBI team. Article 10 of the Constitution of Kenya stipulates the national values and principles of governance that bind all state organs, state officers, public officers, and all persons whenever any of them applies or interprets the Constitution and not applies or interprets any law or implements public policy decisions. The national values and principles of governance include patriotism, national unity, sharing and devolution of power, the rule of law, democracy, and participation of the people, among others. The Building Bridges Initiative seeks to introduce new Article 10A in the Constitution to promote regional integration and cohesion. 
if the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020 will be adopted, the state shall be required to take legislative, policy and other measures to ensure Constitution embraces the goals of African unity and political confederation of Eastern African region as integral towards attainment of sustainable development, prosperity for all and stability. Kevin Washira, Channel One News. Now, clinical officers are demanding the Council of Governors assent to the return to work formula signed between the Ministry of Health and the Union. The clinical officers are threatening not to resume work in the absence of a commitment from a commitment from the county bosses, accusing them of lack of goodwill. The governors have, however, expressed concerns over the sustainability and legality of some of the contents in the document. Beatrice Gatonye with details of the continued twist in the health sector crisis. <laughs> The clinical officers' strike that was supposed to end by 1st of January 2021 is still on. Kenya Union of Clinical Officers say their members will not report to work until the Council of Governors commit to a return to work formula signed between the Ministry of Health and the clinicians. <laughs> Because this is not a new strike. Our strike was to be called off by the execution of the return to work formula. Once that never happened, then the strike was not called off. That is why we are continuing. The clinical officers took to the streets to pressurize the county bosses with the Union Secretary General George Gibore, terming it unfortunate that Kenyans continue to suffer even as he questioned the commitment by governors in ending the strike. Wali kubaliana kwamba tumeweza kuwa na mkataba. Terehe moja walipokuwa kiongea na waziri wa wa afya, wali kubaliana kwamba watatia sahihi mkataba huu wa kurudi kazini terehe ine mwezi wa kwanza lakini walipokuja kwenye mkutano wao waliweza tena kuandika barua ambayo ni tofauti na maneno yao ya terehe moja Kenya Union of Clinical Officers Chairman Peterson Washira accused the counties of hostility and unfair labor practices meted on their members by the county governments saying they will not be coward in their push for their rights once we were able to reduce and to compromise into a return to work formula with all the agencies in place. The Council of Governors, after some days, they have come out to say that they were never involved. That is insincerity. It is lack of goodwill. Uh, to, the, uh, to the Council of Governors, Chair Mr. Obaranya, is that we request him to honor this return to work formula by just appending his signature with Honorable Ongwai. And all these officers will return immediately to their workstation. The governors had in a letter to the Ministry of Health dated 4th January 2021 raised concerns on the return to work formula, noting among others risk allowance that requires a minimum increment of between 500% to 650%, saying it required approval from SRC. They are also concerned on the conversion of contracts to permanent and pensionable terms and enhanced group life cover citing lack of funding to sustain the approved deal. Beatrice Gatonyang Etich, Channel One News. Well, the clinical officers are yet to resume work and in the latest update, uh, Kisi County government has since issued a notice uh, to terminate uh, the recognition agreement that it had signed with the union, accusing the union members of failing to report to work and therefore they have terminated the recognition agreement that they had signed with the clinical officers. We will continue to keep tabs of what is happening uh, between the clinical officers and the county governments, uh, the continued standoff in the signing of this particular agreement, uh, which now the C county government says they, ha they are yet to honor and return to work.
Now, in other news, Nyandarwa County government is mourning the death of Ruri, ward member of the county assembly, John Borogidinji, popularly known as Wamaria. He is alleged to have succumbed to cancer. Meanwhile, a section of Nakuru County residents are calling on the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to probe the use of the National Government Constituency Development Fund in Nakuru Town West constituency. More details in the county briefs with Yusuf Farah. A reward member of County Assembly, John Mburugidinji, according to his brother, has been battling chest cancer and has been in and out of hospital. I was a good person. 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 County Assembly members eulogize him as an active member and focused leader. He was a man who 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 was ni mtu alikuwa anafikiria mambo ya maendeleo ya watu jarulie katika mbuge la nyandaro alikuwa mtu ambaye ameheshimika sana na hakuwa na ugofi na mtu yeyote ule pia alikuwa na umuhimu sana eh, kuona kuwa eh, hali ya afya ya watu wake inakuwa mzuri kwa hiyo he lives behind a wife and six children Separately, the graft case facing the Rokanifi governor Mudomin Juki has been referred to a high court judge after four of the accused persons and the governor made an application seeking to transfer the 34 million shilling graft case to Meru law courts. In the application, they had argued that some of the charges against them were criminal in nature, while some were graft related, querying the jurisdiction of the court to hear the matter. And the court has agreed with us that the court here cannot and shall not have any way to deal with it other than to refer to it to the High Court so that the High Court decides. Elsewhere, a section of Nakuru Town West residents have petitioned the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to probe the use of National Government Constituency Development Fund. Uh, Nakuru Town West in the Kwe Kipokea over 700 million since 2013 to 2019 lakini sisi kama wakilishi wa Nakuru West hatujapata ile kazi ambayo hiyo pesa imekuwa ikifanya. The alleged irregularities in and exaggerated cost during the procurements. The MP uses the higher officers to intimidate. He uses the higher officers in Nairobi to intimidate even the administration. We are saying the administration operates on open door policy. So if he thinks no one can access the higher offices. We are very ready. In the meantime, Muslim leaders from North Arif region are urging parents to allow their children to attend madrasa classes following the resumption of physical learning. The leaders are decrying the low turnout, calling on the government to support resumption of madrasa within the COVID-19 healthy safety measures. Na ilimu ndiyo msingi mkubwa ambao unajenga watoto wetu. Sasa, Watoto wakitopata ilimu inakuwa ni hasara ya taifa. Na walimu... Finally, Kajado residents are relieved following the completion of a 230-kilometer road cutting across five sub-counties that is poised to improve development in the region. The road cutting across Isara Imaroro, Kajado, Isinia and Kiserian has opened up tourism and seen expansion of shopping centers along the stretch of the road. Kulikuwa na shida mingi kwa sababu hii kwanza mahali hapa ilikuwa imenemura barabara ilikuwa na mashimo lakini saa hizi tunaona at least serikali imekuja kutokoa. Isufar Channel One News. Now the Kenya National Union of Teachers say they will not heed to the Teachers Service Commission circular warning them against participating in politics. They argue it is unfortunate for the TSC to deny them an opportunity to exercise their democratic right. The union leaders in Kitui say they will go ahead and participate in politics and run for various positions as the constitution gives them the leeway to do so. Speaking at Muslim secondary schools during the NAT general elections, the teachers condemned TSC for meddling in their rights to support the parties they desire. Mwajiri ametoa members kwa chama kutoka wakati huo hadi wakati huu akiwa na lengo analolijua yeye mwenyewe. Kwa sababu zote na walimu walo hapa hatufahamu ni kwa nini walimu anatolewa chamani now, a cat is a union less. We will be in danger. 
Nat Executive Secretary Yate Branch Kasimbangui said teachers like any other Kenyan have a right to run for political office. But we want to tell the hemp lawyer that the statula we received last month is null and, and void. void. We are going to involve ourselves in politics 100%. His Kitui counterpart Mutunga Ndingo called on teachers to ignore TSC circular warning them against participating in politics, noting that those who desire to run for political office should do so without fear. Walimu, they are citizens of this republic. So we are saying we cannot allow segregation that we are not participating in politics. We have a right to align ourselves to the political wing which we think will assist us teachers. Walimu akianza kupiga siyasa, kusapoti wana siyasa, kusapoti president, wanaambiwa usionge siyasa. Wewe ni mwalimu. Na bado katiba inasema kila citizen ya inji akona freedom. This comes as not criticized TSC for starving the union of funds meant to run its affairs. And as the union holds national elections across the country, they have faulted TSC for alleged intimidation by attempting to disintegrate the union. The Kenya Defense Forces KDF is pleased to announce to the public the recruitment of General Service Officer GSO Cadets. General Service Officer GSO Cadets, undergraduate degree holders, specialist officers, general duty recruits, trades men and women, and Defense Forces Constables, which is scheduled to take place in the month of February 2021. Remember, no one can influence the recruitment process. KDF recruitment is absolutely free to all. For more information, tune in to Radio Taifa on the 8th and 29th of January 2021, just immediately after the 7 p.m. news. Check out the local daily, the standard newspaper, on the 15th of January 2021. My Gov, inside the Star newspaper, on the 12th of January 2021 and 22nd of January 2021. And the People's Daily on the 26th of January and the 5th of February. On the next episode of Ashoka. What we have done today was impossible for you until yesterday, wasn't it? Tell me. Yet we did it today. And where did you learn this? Consider that I have found a new tutor. Who had the audacity to do this? Teacher! Dani ya matatu. <laughs> Unajua? Saturday ya yandika mvifo. Nini wewe? Yani mtu muzima na miaka zake hizo miaka zote. Mtu ajiki kwa kujua kuandika not. N-O-T tu peke yake. <laughs> hey, kusofa kweli inasaidia. Kati jana nina, nini na kusumbwa na mimi? Lauliza ni umbwana. Don't you dare insult me, okay? Mama Angel, don't, don't you dare. Okay. Let the dead bury. They are dead, right? You're burning around. Those of your tuzake zinanuka. Zongea uko. Aya, wani wepita. Nini ni nini? Yani wataka kumpiga. Wazi mpito mpige nini?
Well, welcome back. Boeing has offered 153 million shillings to families as compensation for each victim who perished in two crashes involving the Ethiopian Airlines and Malaysian Lion Air. 32 Kenyans were among the 149 passengers and crew aboard Ethiopian Airlines who died in the 10th March 2019 accident. According to the settlement agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice, Boeing has committed to establish a half a billion dollar fund to compensate families of the 346 victims in the two crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia. On March 10, 2019, a Nairobi-bound ET-302 crashed at Bishofti town shortly after takeoff from the Bole International Airport, killing all the 149 passengers and crew on board, 32 of who were Kenyans. Five months prior to the ET-302 crash, on the 29th of October 2018, a 737 MAX Flight 610 operated by Lion Air crashed shortly after takeoff in Indonesia, killing all the 189 passengers and crew. From the civil litigation, we estimated that for the 346 people, who perished, they would get a billion. Now, through the Department of, Department of Justice, they have entered into a settlement where they've allocated an additional 500 million for these families. Manuel von Ribeck of Ribeck Law Chartered, who represents at least 88 families, revealed that according to the settlement agreement of the U.S. Department of Justice, Boeing will establish a $500 million fund to compensate the families of the 346 victims who died in the crash of Ethiopian Airlines ET-302 in Ethiopia and the Lion Air JT-610 in Indonesia. And we're in the process of speaking with the Department of Justice and the Boeing company to see how the money and how quickly the money can be sent directly to our clients. Now, as far as whether this is the end of the litigation, it isn't. Our cases are still pending in federal court in Chicago. We have uh, settled in excess of 50 cases so far, but we have uh, close to 20 of them still in litigation. As such, Boeing is p to pay families 153 million shillings for each victim who perished in the two ill-fated aircrafts belonging to the Ethiopian Airlines and Lion Air of Malaysia. Federal Aviation Authority in its investigations revealed that the MCAs activated during the flight may have played a role in the crash. Regina Manyara reporting for Channel 1 Business. Now, Kenya has successfully suspended repayment of 32.9 billion shillings after the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the state and the Paris Club. The debt owed to 10 bilateral partners falling due from uh, falling rather due from the 1st of January 2021 to 30th June 2021 will be paid after the signing of individual MOUs beyond the moratorium. Apart from suspending payments, the initiative will give Kenya five years to repay the loans as well as a grace period of one year. Treasury Cabinet Secretary Ukuri Atani said this would give the government the fiscal space to focus on the COVID-19 economic recovery strategy. Kenya is also pursuing suspension of a further 40.6 billion shillings under the G20 DSSI framework that will uh, that is due between the same period. Any tax that was due over the last five years, your penalties and interest would be waived if you pay the principal amount. This year. Now, this is based on the new voluntary tax disclosure program introduced by the Finance Act 2020, which aims at enhancing tax compliance through disclosure of unpaid taxes. The taxman has for long suspected that some taxpayers comprising both of individuals and companies have been failing to declare and pay due taxes. This prompted the National Treasury through the Finance Act of 2020 to introduce voluntary tax disclosure program that offers affected taxpayers a relief on penalties and interest on any tax liability disclosed in respect to the five years running to June 2020. The government expects that the program will help enhance tax compliance as 
well as serve as a relief to taxpayers affected by the challenging economic times brought about by COVID-19 pandemic. The program applies to all tax liabilities such as income tax, corporate tax, pay as you earn, withholding income tax, capital gains tax, value-added tax, withholding VAT, excess duty, monthly rental income tax and turnover tax. The Kenya Revenue Authority in a statement says a taxpayers who take up the offer will get full or partial waiver of the penalties or an interest depending on the time they pay the disclosed taxes. Those who make full payment of disclosed taxes this year will get 100% relief in penalties and interest, while those who pay next year shall get 50% relief, as those paying in 2023 shall get relief of 25%. However, the tax relief will not benefit those under audit, compliance verification or investigation, and those with an ongoing litigation relating to the tax liability. Now, cotton farmers in Busia are concerned that challenges marketing their crop could cost them their investment. The farmers who are expecting a bumper harvest from the GMO cotton crop are calling for, the, for a revival of the collapsed generis. As part of the Big Four agenda under the manufacturing pillar, the government purposed to revive the textile industry. Part of the steps taken was the introduction of cotton seed improved with a BT gene to provide inherent resistance to the devastating African bollworm pest, boosting cotton production. Farmers say this is working. <laughs> Ikipasuka inapasuka pamba nyeupe kabisa. Tuliweza kupanda vizuri, ikachubuka, ikamea. Na tunashukuru percentage yake ya kumea ilimea vizuri sana. However, farmers in Busia are concerned that despite the bumper harvest, their produce could lack market as the Mulwanda ginery they were counting on is yet to be revived. Ile chakula kingine kama wibi, kama maidi, ikikosa soko naweza kura. Lakini sasa paba they decried the influence of middlemen in the market who purchase at a lower price at the expense of the farmer. Agricultural officials have assured farmers that the county has put in place measures to ensure cotton factories purchase their produce. Upande wa soko, tuko na kampuni mbili. Na wote wamekuja na maombi ya kwamba wangependa kununua iyo koto na ambayo wakulima wame, wamevuna e, kuna mkataba ambao tumeingia na kampuni zenyewe Beti Kiptum, Channel on Business And in sports, Gormaya shortstopper Levis Opio has terminated his stay with the club over salary areas. Opio arrived at the Kenya Premier League champions uh, from promoted side Nairobi City Stars at the start of the 2020-2021 season and was seen as a direct replacement for Peter Odiambo, who left Kogalo to sign for Wazito FC. However, despite joining the club, Opio is yet to start for the team this season with his only meaningful contribution coming in the CAF Champions League match against APR of Rwanda, where he was handed a bench roll after veteran Boniface on watch was ruled out through illness. Opio has already written to Gormahia requesting to move on. Now, KCB FC leads the FKF Premier League standings after match day seven, following their one nil win over Bitco over the weekend. Their sixth win in six matches so far. Kariobangi Sharks' impressive 4-3 win over Kenyan champions Gormahia leaves them in the second position, while Tasca is third after the Robert Matano led side won one nil away to Kakamega Homeboys.
Now, Anthony Davis scored 27 points in his return from a one-game injury haters as the Los Angeles Lakers remained unbeaten on the road with a 120-102 victory over the Houston Rockets. Elsewhere, Steve Curry could only manage 11 points as the Golden State Warriors secures a 106-105 win over the Toronto Raptors in San Francisco. Who missed the Lakers' win over the Chicago Bulls last Friday with the right doctor strain, started 9 for 9 from the floor. LeBron James added 18 points, 7 rebounds and 7 assists, while Montrez Harrell produced 16 points and 8 boards off the Lakers' bench. Yeah, it's, a, it's a balancing act, you know. Some nights the offense is going to be there, some nights the defense. You know, I, I've got a lot of confidence in, in this team on the defensive end. You know, it, we've had some, some nights where you know we were a step slow to certain things and still learning coverages and whatnot, but... Um, you know, I think we're going to be good there. You know, we just got to be a team that buys into uh, being a team first uh, team offensively and, and continuing to trust the pass. We had 28 assists tonight. Uh, that was a big part of it. And, you know, this, this game, is, as much as any uh, throughout the year, was, uh, was a Laker basketball type of win. You know, flying around defensively and getting stops without fouls, uh, either forcing turnovers or forcing misses, and then flying on the break. Kristen Wood led the Rockets to 23 points, while James Harden added 20 points and 9 assists but committed 7 turnovers. Meanwhile, Shai Gilgis Alexander scored a season high 31 points as the visiting Oklahoma City Thunder overcame a slow start and pulled away for 129-116 victory over the Brooklyn Nets. I thought the second quarter was turnovers, you know, unforced turnovers, kicking the ball over the gym, up 15. Lack of focus gets them right back in the game. Third quarter, I mean, 66 points in the paint tonight, 72 points in the second half. It's just pride. You know, no matter what defense you're in, you got to sit down and guard someone. Elsewhere, Damian Lee calmly dropped in two free throws with 4.3 seconds remaining as the host Golden State Warriors overcame one of the worst shooting performances of Steph Curry's career to record 106 to 105 victory over the Toronto Raptors in San Francisco. Now, Moise Kian scored for the third straight game as Paris Saint-Germain won for the first time under Mauricio uh, Pochettino. Paris Saint-Germain humbled Brest 3-0 and, uh, and are now one point behind the Des Lyon who are held at 2-2. Argentina forward Mauro Icardi doubled the lead before Spain midfielder Pablo Sarabia scored from... Very well, it's time for us to wrap up Channel One News Hour tonight. As always, thank you, Kenya, for watching and, of course, sharing with me your feedback. I see lots of feedback, uh, but I can't be able to take all of them. But I see Sally Salome Wangare saying, we need prayers uh, in our country. We are seeing Wakili. Why, why are people being murdered like that? We need God to help and protect all of us. Uh, another one here saying, it's another sad story. How would a person take a life uh, in this world is finished, so many lives have been lost. What next? Another one saying uh, that they congratulate Maraga for having completed his term. Uh, this one also saying, what has become of our girls? A big number expecting babies. This is so, so sad. We do appreciate every time you give us your feedback and interact with us here on Channel One news hour but for now we have to put a cap on the program my name is Catherine Nachenga uh, thank you for watching and of course our sign language interpreter this evening was Lensa Odingo it's time for the weather report with Yusuf Farah good night and God bless Tonight, rainfall is expected in the western and central parts of the country and the coldest areas of the country tonight are Nyeri, Kitale and Eldoret tying at 12 degrees each. My name is Yusuf Farah. This is your Channel 1 weather updates. Now let's take a look at how your Tuesday morning will be looking like and will be waking up to quite the sunny morning from 
most parts of the country from Mandera Garissa, which will be waking up to sunny intervals in the morning. The same will be experienced in the coastal region, Mombasa, Malindi, Kwale and Kilifi. Areas of Kisumu and its environs, however, will be waking up to light rains in the morning, accompanied by sunny intervals. Lodwa all the way to the Lekchukana Basin will also be having sunny intervals in the morning. I'll take a look at the afternoon now where Kisumu, Kitale, Kiricho, Kisi and its environs will be having showers accompanied by thunderstorms. Areas of the coastal region will continue having sunny intervals. Mombasa will be having partly cloudy conditions accompanied by sunny intervals. Mandera and Garissa also having sunny intervals all the way to the Lekchukana Basin and areas bordering Kenya and Assam. Sudan. Now let's take a look at the temperatures tomorrow and Lodwa and Mandera will both be having highs of 33, lows of 23 and 24 respectively. Marsabit highs of 30, lows of 23 and the capital city highs of 24 and a lows of 15. That wraps up your local weather focus. The international weather focus is coming up in a bit until we meet tomorrow again same time, same place. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a lovely night.